In this video, I'll show you the simplest and the fastest way to format your book for Kindle eBook and KDP print with Microsoft Word for free. Now, if you would pay somebody else to do this, you'll be paying $50 to $100 or more, but don't worry because I'll be showing you how you can do it yourself quickly and get it ready to upload to Amazon. So we'll be covering different options to format your book and how to format your book for free with Word. And I'll also show you how to outsource your book formatting if you choose to. So after watching this video, if you decide you don't really want to do it, then I'll show you an option for that. So let's start with formatting ebooks. So there are a few core formatting rules that you have to follow, but besides those, it is really your personal preference on how you want it to look. So I'll be showing you how I formatted all of my books when I first started publishing. So this is a quick look on how a ebook formatting should look like. So we got your title, subtitle, author name, we got the copyright, table of contents, and then you have your body chapters after this. So let's quickly go over some formatting rules. So any font you prefer is fine, but simple and clean font is best. So my favorite fonts are Georgia, Garamond, or Times New Roman. For the font size, I recommend you stick to 11 or 12. Now, Georgia is naturally big as a font, so I use size 11, but for others, I use size 12. So right now, I use Garamond font size 12 uh, for all my books. So for line spacing, stick to 1.25 to 1.5 max and format every single chapter title as heading one. Now, don't worry, I'll show you how to do this live uh, after this, but I just wanna go over it real quick. So you also wanna justify all body text. You wanna remove extra spaces and replace it with page break at the end of the chapter. And for a nonfiction book, you'll be adding line space between every paragraph, but for fiction, you'll be using indentation. Now, this video might be a little more detailed and in-depth than other video you will see on YouTube, but the reason why I decided to do this is because I wanted to make sure you guys can actually format a beautiful book, you know, yourself with Microsoft Word. I'll be showing you step-by-step step how to do this. So just follow along and you'll be good to go. All right, so let's just say that you either got your book back from the ghostwriter or you wrote the book yourself. And this is how it looks now. The first thing you want to do is you click on this reverse uh, P or basically a Q button here. And this will show all the invisible formatting such as uh, this represents the spaces here. So if you click enter, you'll be adding uh, extra space. You And if you delete, then you'll be removing spaces here. So first thing first, uh, you see that I already have the book as Garamond, but if you do want to change the font, you can command A, uh, that means select all text. That is with Mac. If you have a PC, there's another command, you can look it up, but you can go and change the text to uh, whatever you know font you wanna use. So the next thing is you wanna adjust the trim size. Uh, so this doesn't matter for eBooks, but I do it because it makes it easier uh, to convert it into a paperback book later on. But if you wanna skip this step, if you're just doing eBook formatting, you can too. So go up to file here and go down to page setup. And you can see that right now, the page size is a US letter. So it's 8.5 by 11. Now, what you wanna do is you want to change this to whatever page size uh, that you want to print your paperback book at. So if it's a six by nine, you do six by nine. If it's a five by eight, you can do five by eight. Uh, you don't have this custom paper option now. Uh, this is something that I set. So you wanna go to manage custom sizes. And from here, you can enter whatever, uh, if it's a six by nine, you can do six by nine, enter it. And you will have that option in the future as well. So for now, I'll just select six by nine uh, and click okay click OK, and you can see that it kind of shrinks it. And that is why I like to do this in the beginning, because now we can format it uh, as this trim size compared to, you know, doing all the formatting and then adjusting the trim size later. And now we have to reformat everything again. All right, next, we want to adjust the margin and the layout. So go to layout here, click on margins and then click on custom margins. The first thing you want to click on pages here, make sure you click on mirror margins. And for the outside, you want to lower this to 0.6. And for the gutter, put this to 0.12 and make sure it's applied to the whole document and click on OK. Now, this was just a personal preference on how we prefer the layout to be. Uh, the gutter, the margins, it's it's kind of up to you, but that's uh, if you don't have a preference, this is the recommended starting number. OK, there's actually one more thing you want to do is so go back to layout, go back to custom margins here, then go to layout here and click on different odd and even and different first page. Once again, make sure it's applied to the whole document and click on OK. All right, so once again, that section, you can completely skip it, to be honest, uh, if you're just formatting for eBooks. But if you're going to do the KDP print formatting too, then it will be handy uh, later on. So now you want to go and format the rest of the book so that it looks nice. So the first thing I would do is I would take the title page. I would bring this uh, to center. I would also probably lower it a little bit so it's more in the middle of the page. This is personal preference, uh, but you kind of want to play around with how you how you like 
it to look right so you can even adjust the, the size here that's a little too big right so i'll probably keep it like this okay and now you can see that you know it kind of goes right into page two which is a copyright page so what you want to do is you want to add a uh, page break so instead of you know just adding random spaces here what's better is to remove the space and instead add page break which tells uh, Microsoft Word and also Amazon once it becomes a ebook version right that the page ends there and the next page starts from after the page break okay so that is what the page break is so just click on page break here once again it's insert and page break okay and it'll basically bring everything to the next page so here you can remove the space if you want uh, the next chapter to start from exactly at the top I usually just add an extra line here so it starts more in the middle and from here what you want to do is to select all the text and click on justify so you don't want to do it to the left you don't want to do it uh, to the right you want it to be justified so this one all right so same thing uh, once the copyright page which is page two right is done you want to go and insert page break and then from here you just keep uh, doing the same thing so remove some space here and for the chapter heading, right? So introduction is a chapter heading. What you want to do is you want to format as heading one. So click on heading one here and you can adjust the size once again. Uh, you can see that it's already set as Garamond size 16 bold, which is what I prefer as my, uh, my chapter heading. Uh, but you can also right click this and modify if it's not set as the way you like it. Uh, but typically I change the setting here. So it's Garamond 16 bold and then it has this uh, double or 1.5 space setting click OK. So from now, every time I highlight, click on heading one, it's automatically set as that setting. OK, so you want to go back and look at this once again. If you have a nonfiction book, right, like this one is a nonfiction book, you'll be just adding line space for each paragraph uh, as a spacing. If you have a fiction book, though, you'll be adding uh, a indentation here. So just keep that in mind. So as I go down here, once my introduction chapter is done, I'll just do the same thing. Click on page break and I will go in, remove the extra spacing here and I will just click on uh, heading one. OK, so some people like to have the the chapter title start way in the middle like this. That is up to you. Right. And then from here, you can definitely, you know, adjust the size of this as well. Right. So you can keep making it bigger. Some people prefer, you know, this kind of look. So that is up to you. So you want to keep going and make sure you format everything. You can add heading two, heading three, right? Like this one right here. Uh, but me personally, I just stick to heading one. So heading two and heading three is basically, you know, the, the sub chapters within the chapters. Uh, you could format it that way, but it really doesn't matter. So all you need is heading one here and the page breaks. Those are the most important. All right, so once you go through and mark every single chapter as heading one, you put the page breaks, right? Your formatting is pretty much done for the ebook side. So the last thing you want to do is you want to go back up here and, you know, right after the copyright page, you want to add a table of content, right? Because we don't have that right now. So just click on space. You can add another page break just to indicate that you want a extra page there. Just remove extra spacing that happens. So now we have uh, uh, basically another page here, right? From here, you can go and click on references, table of contents, custom table of contents. And it is up to you on how you want it to look. So just kind of play around with it. Uh, but I just keep it here from the template. And I would just remove the page number because this is an ebook, so the page number doesn't matter. And I'll just click on use hyperlinks instead of page numbers. Click OK. And as you can see here, uh, it kind of picked up my, you know, heading two, heading three, because I have these sub chapters, right? So if you don't want this, honestly, just highlight it, go back to references, go to custom table of contents again, and you just lower the levels, right? So it, it says level three here. So that's why it's picking up uh, heading three as well. But I just want heading one. So I just lower this to heading uh one and then I yes updated here and now it's a lot cleaner here so then you can go and play around with the formatting of the table of contents as well you can play around with the spacing here right make it look a little nicer you can even increase the the fonts here but anyways now you click on the chapter and it'll take you right there and that is how you know that it's working so just make sure everything looks good but essentially that is all you have to do for your ebook formatting so make sure you go up here click on file click on save a copy because now we're going to go and format it for paperback. So you want to have a separate copy because we're going to be editing this current copy. 
All right, now that you got your ebook ready, it is time to convert the manuscript to KDP print, which is the paperback version. This will be a PDF file. But just to recap, there are different trim sizes that you can decide on. You can do five by eight, you can do six by nine, which is good for journals and those kind of books if you're publishing it. Five by eight and also six by nine is good for nonfiction and fiction books as well. And you can also do 8.5 by 11, which are more so for low content books. But once again, this is really personal preference. I usually do five by eight, 5.5 by 8.5 or six by nine. So this is the settings that I use for most of my books, uh, which is 1.25 to 1.5 spacing, 12 font size uh, using the Garamond font. I use a 5.5 by 8.5 trim size and I use a cream paper. With this setting, uh, 30,000 words will be about 150 to 180 pages, which is kind of the sweet spot. All right, going back to your book here, right? Once again, make sure that this is a separate copy of the one you just saved. So you should have two copy of this because one of them, we're gonna turn it into a paperback uh, formatted book. And the other version is going to be your ebook file. So we've already done the margins, we've already done the layout, so that is good. So we can just skip that. So what you wanna do is to click on this section right here, and you can see that this is the footer and this is the header. So I would skip the title page and I would start this from page two, right? And I will put the author name in the uh, even pages. So in this case, the headers, and you can just click out of it or you can format this even more. So what I like to do, I would like to have this in the middle here. Uh, once again, change the font to Garamond. And in this case, I'll keep it at size 11. And you can see that it kind of shows up like that. So every even pages, right? Every other page, there'll be my uh, author name right here showing up. So next you wanna to go to page three, which in our case is going to be the, uh, the table of contents page, right? And by the way, I forgot to do one thing is you want to add the table of contents, right? So you can do this on the ebook version as well, but just put a table of content and you can kind of, you know, play around with the, the font and then change the, the size, put this, and now it looks a little better, but you can always uh, fix this later on, so that's fine. So going back to the, the header, right? So now click on the header, this is going to be the odd page header and you can put your title here. So in my case, I'll put passive income secrets, right? And I will format it the same way. All right, so now every odd page, right? So every odd page, I'll have the title name show up. Every even page, I'll have the author name show up and that's gonna be throughout the entire book. All right, next you wanna go up to insert and insert page number here. And this is personal preference, but I like to put it in the center here. Some people like to put it in the outside as well. And you can click on OK. And now you have the page number showing up on every single page like this. You can also format this. So once again, if you double click on this, you can go and format it. Uh, so I always change it to Garamond and size 11. All right, next, I recommend you adjust the line spacing. So click here uh, to line spacing options. And for the line spacing here, click on multiple and select 1.3. And for the paragraph spacing, which is right here, you can keep it at zero for before, but you can put eight points after and click on okay. So what this does is, as you can see, it adds a little extra space between the paragraph. So it's not the exact same space uh, throughout the entire text. So it looks a little nicer. All right, so after that, you want to do a final check. So go through the entire uh, book, right? Make sure the page break is set, which it should be because you've already done it with the ebook version and make sure that the chapter looks nice, the body text looks nice, everything is formatted properly. And once you confirm this, you want to scroll back up to the table of contents. So the table of contents is always the last thing that you uh, essentially touch, but you want to highlight this, go back to references, table of contents, custom table of contents. And once again, I'll keep everything the same, except now it's a paperback book, right? So we wanna show the page number. So click on show page numbers and remove the use hyperlinks instead. And now you can see that it just updated. It's the same thing, except now it's using the page number instead of the hyperlink. So from here, just keep in mind that every time after you generate the table of contents, if you change something in the formatting, so if you, let's say, add a page break, so now you have an extra page in the document, you will have to update this. All you have to do is you go to references, update table of contents, right? And it says update page numbers only. So keep in mind here, it says introduction is page four. Now it's page five because we added an extra page. So I remove the extra page here. Uh, I will have to update this once again. So going back to references, update table, update page numbers only, and it goes back to uh, introduction being on page four. All right, so the final thing, go up to file, and now you want to save 
but this time you want to save as a PDF. So we'll be uploading a PDF on Amazon KDP, so save as that. So this is a final product. Uh, as you can see, it's up to you on how you want it to be. Like you can have the, you know, the chapter title bigger and lower, but overall it looks pretty clean. It looks pretty nice. And this is something that you can format yourself uh, on Microsoft Word for free. And once you get the steps, it's pretty quick to do so too. But if you don't wanna do this, right, if you're watching this and you're like, oh, this is too many steps, I'd just rather pay somebody else to do this for me, then you can easily outsource on Fiverr. So I'll leave a link to all these services on Fiverr below this video so you guys can go directly to them. But I've been working with these gigs uh, for many, many years. This is really the budget option. So this person right here will format up to 14,000 words for $40. Uh, if you're doing you know, 30K or above, it'll be $75, but still not too bad considering it's going to save you a lot of time if you don't really want to learn how to do this right this is more of the premium option you can see that the interior uh, looks really nice so if you want a more premium kind of formatting this uh, will do it for you and if you got a fiction book and you want to format your fiction book uh, then this gig will do it as well and it looks very 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 nice inside so it's up to you on you know if you want to do it yourself or outsource it but if you choose to outsource once again the link to these services is below this video all right guys so that is how you step-by-step -step format your book on Microsoft Word hope you enjoyed the video if you want more tutorial if you want more videos let me know uh, if you want a completely free training on how I built a seven-figure publishing business then the link to the training is also in the description below as well as all the tools and resources that I recommend in your publishing business so if you enjoyed the video leave a like subscribe if you haven't yet thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one